Saxon Algebra 2, Lesson 63. We have a trig topic today, my friends. Um, so please grab a scientific calculator that will allow you to calculate the trig functions and you can play along with me. Uh, and we're going to learn how to add vectors, which is a super useful, very practical, real life math skill. And we're gonna do a lot of this in the future. Okay, so in a very rare break from tradition, I'm going to do, there are two examples in this lesson. I'm going to do them out of order. They make more sense to me if you do them out in the, if you do the second one first. So if you're looking in your book, yes, we're skipping the first one for now, even though it's one of my favorite problems of all time. We'll come back to it. And it will be the, all the better for waiting. Uh, the instructions for example 63.2 tell us simply to add 30 at 55 degrees and 10 at 170 degrees. What is this madness? What are we even talking about? What we're saying is that these vectors can be considered trips. They're a distance and a direction, right? This is the distance. We also call it the hypotenuse, but it's the distance, and this is the direction. It's true for both of them. I'm not gonna write it twice, but it's true for both of them. So we can think of these as trips, and we can combine them and see how far we traveled as a result. Now, here is an interesting fact. In their polar form, we cannot add them together. But if we convert them into rectangular coordinates, it's super easy to add them together. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna convert this into rectangular, this into rectangular, and then we will add them together. I'm gonna draw a box down here to show what that will look like. Here will be the first one, I'm gonna call this number one, and we're going to turn that into a sign and a number on the right axis and a sign and a number on the up axis. And then this is our second piece. We're gonna turn that into a sign and a number and a sign and a number. And then, whoa, it's gonna be magical. We're gonna add them together and we're gonna get a total that will be the answer to our problem. It will also be a sign and a number to the right and the up, right? So this will be the total. Okay, so how do we convert these into rectangular questions? That is the order of the day. First, we start always by drawing a picture of the triangle. 55 degrees is gonna be in the first quadrant. So I adjust my pictures so that I don't have to draw the whole quadrant, the whole four quadrants. I just wanna zero in on the part that I'm interested in. 55 degrees, this is 90, right? So 55 is a little more than half. So I approximate it. I draw it as big as I want. And I say this is 30 degrees. No, this is 30 units, whatever it is. This is 55 degrees, sorry. And then I drop a line back to my X axis, or the right axis, if you will, and I make my right triangle. Now, I want to find this side and this side, because this will be my right value, and up here, this point will be even with this. This will be my quote unquote up value, which is the same as this, right? So if I can find this side and this side, that will tell me all I need to know to fill in these blanks. We've done this before, right? We're gonna use trig functions. We're gonna keep in mind, okay, there's the right angle marker. So this I know is the hypotenuse. Here's my angle. This is where we're oriented, right? As usual, we're down. We're not up here at the top of the triangle. We're usually on the bottom of the triangle. Um, that's not always true, so don't pay attention to that. Um, we know that this is the side next to us, so this is the adjacent side, and this is the one farthest away, so this is the opposite. 
okay? Take a second, just make sure you understand which side is which. Hypotenuse is always opposite the right angle marker. And then between the two legs, it's relative. The one that's closest to the angle we like is the adjacent, and the one that is far away from the angle is the opposite. Now we're going to use trig signs to find the lengths of these two sides. We remember that we'd like to find this one first because this will be the right value, right? This is the right axis, this is the up axis. We would like to find this one because that's the one we want to put in the blanks first. So it helps to do them in order. This, these problems can turn into a wild scramble really quickly. So to find this one, it's the adjacent. We remember that that is cosine. Cosine equals, cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So we know that the cosine of 55 degrees will equal this side. I'm just going to call it A for short over the hypotenuse, which is 30. There's the A. All right, now, because we're gonna do this calculation over and over and over again, we can really quickly get to the point where we recognize that you take the hypotenuse, multiply it, times the degree, and that will give you the adjacent side. Okay, we don't have to write this every time. We automatically know, oh look, there's where the hypotenuse goes. If we, because very often it is set up this way where we don't have the adjacent side, but we do have the hypotenuse. Remember cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Let me remind you of that. So we're gonna use this presentation and just skip that step of multiplying it up. That will give us the adjacent side. We remember we use the very same calculation, except we use the other function. We use sine of 55 degrees, and that will get us the opposite side, right? Sine is Oscar had. So that's opposite, cosine is adjacent. All right, so I go to my calculator. I enter 55 cosine times 30 equals, and I get the number 17.2073. I'm gonna work this in four decimal places just to show you it doesn't hurt a bit. All right, and I can see by looking at my picture, that is a positive right value because it's going this way from the origin. Now I do the same calculation using sine and I get 24.5746. Make sure you're getting these values when you enter this. Remember, 55 sine times 30. I can see that this is also positive up, right? We're going this way. So if we take a trip traveling 30 miles, let's just say, at 55 degrees, we will end up 17 units to the right and 24 units, I'm rounding, 25 units up from where we started. This is our starting place, all right? Now, we're going to find this triangle and add it in to the other one, which seems weird, but it works. Okay, 170 degrees. I'm thinking, I know there's 90 in every quadrant. It's not gonna be in the first quadrant. That only goes up to 90. The second quadrant goes up to 180. So that tells me this is gonna be a second quadrant angle. If you don't like doing this or you find it difficult, just draw the whole thing. But it just is messy and it takes up a lot of space. Now, I know that I start counting my, ang my degrees from here and I go all the way over here. This much is 170 but I know the whole thing is 180. So that tells me that this is 10 degrees. And because I orient my triangle going down like this, I am interested in a 10 degree angle. The 10 degree angle will give me information about this point, which is the point I'm interested in, 170 degrees at 10, right? That's our hypotenuse. So, I've got the right 
angle, but when I go to do my trig angles, I'm gonna use the 10 degree because that's the triangle I made. That's a subtle and very fine point. But just the same, I want, I know this is my hypotenuse, here is where we're oriented. So this is my 10 degree. I want the adjacent side here. And I want the opposite side here. Remember that the opposite equals the measure over here on the up axis. It just, we measure it over here, but it's the same number over here. Um, okay, I'm not going to use this form. I'm going to go put my hypotenuse right on the, front of my trig sign, so 10 is my hypotenuse, times the cosine of 10 degrees will give me my adjacent side, and remember our adjacent side equals the right, right, because adjacent is measured on the right axis, so that's why it goes in the first spot, and we calculate this 10 cosine times 10, and we get 9.8481. Now we need to figure out the sign for that and we look and see, oh, we're going to the negative side of the right axis, right? It's where the negative numbers live because there's the origin. So that is the negative right. Okay, so far so good. Now we want to use 10 times the sine of 10 degrees. That will give us the opposite, which is this side, which is the same value of the number on the up axis. That is 1.7365. Now we have, again, the calculator gives us the number, but we have to figure out the positive or negative value. And I see here's the up axis. I'm going in a positive direction on the up axis. So there's my calculation. The last step is probably the easiest step. All we have to do is make this addition, right? It's we're, sometimes we're adding negative numbers, so we have to be careful of that. But when we combine these, we get, for our solution, positive 7.3592. And our up value is, notice these are both positive, so we're adding them. So you really have to think about what you're doing as you make these calculations. It's just addition, but it can be a bit tricky. All right, so if we take these two trips, 30 miles at 55 degrees, and then stop and go 10 more miles at 170 degrees, where we will end up is at a point that is seven to the positive right and 26 to the positive up, all right? The calculation is one that we're going to do over and over and over again, and we'll get quite familiar with it. Sometimes John will ask us then to take this point, which is now written in rectangular coordinates, and he'll ask us to put it back into polars. And we know how to do that, but that's we're not going to do that this time. We're just going to leave it in this form. Okay, we're going to do another example that is this exact same calculation. The only difference is we're going to add a story to the top of it. And I love the story. So let's go back and do that first problem. I think it's always easier to work a problem that doesn't have a story. So that's why I did the other one first. So here's 63.1. And let me read you the story. Flying Arrow left the village and traveled 20 miles on a heading of 20 degrees. From this point, he traveled 40 miles on a heading of 210 degrees. How far from the village did he end up? Oh, you know what? I'm sad. John did want us to continue on converting that old triangle into... Oh gosh, all right, sorry, we can't talk. I'm so anxious to get to Flying Arrow. John does not want this as an answer. He does want us to take this and move it back into polar coordinates. So we're going to do that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna round these now to two decimal places. This will be 7.36, this will be 26.31.
So we're going to take that pair of rectangular coordinates. I'm sorry, flying arrow, you have to wait a little bit longer. So it's plus 7.36 to the right, plus 26.31 to the ups. We need to convert this back to polar. So what we want it to look like is a direction and a distance. This will be the hypotenuse and this will be the angle. All right, so what we have to do, we've already combined those two trips. This is the point where you end up after you take the two trips. We just have to graph it, draw the triangle rather, I guess I should say it that way, and then we have to convert it into polars. So let's start by drawing it. Um, it's positive and positive. That tells me first quadrant. I also know it's going to be kind of a tall and skinny triangle. So I go to positive 7. This is 7.36 right here. And then it's going to be way up here. This distance here is 26.31. The point goes where those two places intersect, right? Because it's rectangular. So we can draw the dots and think of it that way. Then we go from the origin to the point and then straight back down to the R axis. Pretend it's perfect. Let's move it there. Okay, so there's our right angle. This is our degree. We don't know it yet. We call it theta as a mystery. And this we don't know yet. We call it H for hypotenuse. It's opposite that marker. This we know is the distance on the right angle. This we know is the distance on the up. I'm gonna move it over here because the length of this side of the triangle is the same as that distance. So we can write that one in both places. Now, how do we find the hypotenuse? How do we find the angle? Let's find the angle first. The two numbers we do have are the adjacent and the opposite. And we know that that will give us the tangent, right? Tangent is over Arthur. So we can say that the tangent of theta degrees, whatever that is, we use that as a placeholder, is going to equal the opposite, 26.31, over the adjacent, 7.36. So if we can reduce this to a decimal, we can then use the tangent inverse button. Remember, this is the one that we use. We have to hit the second key first in order to find this one. But if we hit second, then what you want to do is you want to enter, do this with me, 26.31 divided by 7.36 and then hit inverse tangent, okay? Make sure you're in second before you start the calculation. Go to second first, 26.31 divided by 7.36 equals, you'll have a decimal number, then tangent of minus one, and that should give you the value that theta equals 74.37, and that's a degree measurement. Your calculator won't tell you that. But that tells us that this angle is 74.37 degrees, and that goes right here. And, and that's exactly what we want, right? Sometimes it's crazy, but not yet. That's exactly the measure we need for our polar coordinate. So 74.37 degrees is a part of our answer. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, We're ready to find the hypotenuse. Now we have options to do this. Some students really lean into using Pythagorean here. And we know that 
the hypotenuse will equal the square root of the other two sides squared, right? The adjacent side plus the squared plus the opposite side squared will give us this. That's fine. I'm perfectly fine with you using that, but I want you also to understand that you can use trig functions to find this because now we have the angle and we have the adjacent or the opposite. So we can use sine or cosine to find the hypotenuse. What I'm gonna do, this time I will use cosine and I know that the cosine of 74.37 degrees is going to be equal to, cosine is adjacent, so it's 7.36 over the hypotenuse. Because cosine is a hold, right? We go back to our Oscar head, A hold over Arthur. So I put the adjacent side here and I can solve for the hypotenuse. Now, the only struggle with this is that we have to do a little bit of algebra to clean this up, but I will give you a hint. When your variable's down here and you want it up here, the easiest thing to do is cross multiply and then divide this part away. So basically, if I can shortcut you on the math, what I'm saying is that if you cross multiply and then divide, you will get H equals these two essentially trade places. Okay, that's the bottom line. If you cross multiply, that's multiplied by one, so it's fine. Cross multiply, get your H up here, then divide away the cosine piece. That's what you get here. So you can shortcut that process a little bit just by mentally saying, hey, you guys are gonna change places. Now we can solve this in the calculator. You'll need to use parentheses, 7.36 divided by open parentheses, 74.37 cosine, close parentheses equals. The answer that you get here should be 7.36. I'm going to write it H equals 27.32. And that's the number that goes here. So what have we done? We took two polar coordinates, we changed them to rectangular coordinates so that we could add them, that's what we got right here, and then we took these and converted them back to polar coordinates. That was a lot of work, wasn't it? It's kind of like two problems in one, which is why I thought we were ready to go to flying arrow, but we weren't because we had to do this process. So we go from Polars, we draw the two triangles, we convert them using uh, cosine and sine respectively, then we add them together and we get a total. We take that total, we draw the triangle of that total, and then we use inverse tangent to find the angle. That's a, that's a must do. And then to find the hypotenuse, we can either use Pythagorean or we can use sine or cosine because we now have the angle, right? We figured out the angle. And so we can use that to, um, with cosine or sine to solve for the hypotenuse. Either way is fine, but here's the thing. I want you to be comfortable with both. Some students just feel like trig functions are scary and Pythagorean is an old friend. Um, I don't wanna argue that, but you can make a new friend too. So learn how to do both ways. Okay, now can we please do flying arrow? My gosh, I've been dying for him, haven't I? 63.1. In my mind, flying arrow is a native Inuit person in the far reaches of either Alaska or maybe Canada, 
and he is medically trained. He's a doctor or a physician's assistant, and he travels to the small remote villages of his people to serve their medical needs. He's got a little red plane. In the winter, he puts skis on it so he can land on the snow or the ice, um, you know, like on an open lake or something. And in the summer, he switches that out for pontoons and lands on open water. And he travels around to these remote villages that are not accessible by road, and he serves the medical needs of the people. He brings, you know, insulin for the diabetics, and he takes care of the pregnant moms, and he, he helps the old guys with their heart failure. And he's just a really nice man who travels from village to village to village. So he's constantly going on these little short trips in different directions, and he needs our help in figuring out where he's going to end up on this day's journey because he has to make sure he has enough gas to get home. I feel very personally bonded with Flying Arrow. Okay, so I'm going to read the story and I want you to listen. I also want you to pay attention to how I make notes on this so that you can do the same. Flying Arrow left the village, the village where he keeps his plane, the village where he spent the night, the village where he lives, I don't know. And he traveled 20 miles on a heading of 20 degrees. 20 miles on a heading of 20 degrees. From this point, he traveled 40 miles on a heading of 210 degrees. 40 miles, 210 degrees. How far from the village did he end up? We add them. First trip, second trip, we need to figure out where he ends up. All right, we can do this, right? This is trip one, this is trip two. We're gonna draw triangles, we're gonna do calculations, and then in the end, we're gonna make a nice box here that shows this is where he would end up after the first trip, and this is what the second trip would do. And then when we add them together, this will be his final, I was gonna say his final resting place, but let's not, let's not kill him. That will be where he ends up. And you know, he needs to make sure there's gas here. Maybe he's gonna spend the night here, I'm not sure. But this is where he'll end up after the two trips. This is the first trip, this is the second trip. In the beginning with these problems, I want you to write the numbers like I'm doing and write them down here and very carefully sort this out so that you won't get lost. There's so many numbers flying around in these calculations. It's easy to get lost. We're doing the same thing multiple times. We're going backwards. These problems can easily overwhelm a person. So follow my process and it will help you. So what we're gonna do is first draw a picture of the first trip. It's 20 degrees, so we know it's in the first quadrant. The first quadrant goes from zero to 90. It's a pretty shallow triangle, right? We can draw whatever we want. That's 20 degrees. We drop it down to the quote unquote right axis. This is the up axis. Um, we also know the hypotenuse is 20. That's a little confusing. I'm gonna circle this just to end right H equals. That just helps me keep it separate from that. I'm gonna put this marker in there. It helps me remember that's the angle. Uh, we're going to use cosine to find the adjacent side, and we're going to use sine to find the opposite side. Hypotenuse, we're oriented here. This is where the angle comes out from, and adjacent is related to the right angle, so we'll do that first. Cosine is our friend when we want the adjacent side. We remember that we can write the hypotenuse right here so we don't have to do an extra step. 20, the hypotenuse, times the cosine of 20 degrees will give us the adjacent side. And the adjacent side is the same as the right side. So grab your calculator. I'm gonna do this just to help you remember that this is giving us the R value. We calculate that and we get 18.8. .8.
and we can see that the adjacent side is going in the positive direction, so we know that's positive. We have to think for ourselves on the signs. Calculator gives us the number, we have to figure out the signs in our very own brains. All right, now let's do the up value. It's gonna be 20 times the sine of 20 degrees. These calculations work exactly the same. We just use cosine to get adjacent and sine to get the opposite, which is also the up value. I've got it here and there. I don't think I did this last time. This is helpful to remind you that cosine is always associated with right and sine is always associated with up. Okay, calculator, 20 sine times 20 gives us a value of 6.8. I'm rounding this time to one decimal place to show you that we can do it either way. Um, we have to figure out the sign for ourselves, positive, negative. This is going up, right? Remember that the, the opposite side can also be measured here. It's a little, we can see it in two places. This one, it's usually the same line. But this one, we have to kind of think carefully. Yeah, this is the, this point is right here, so this length is the same as this length. So we can say that that is a positive 6.8 up. Okay, we've got the first part of his trip figured out. This is how he traveled, written in rectangular coordinates. Now how about this one? 210 degrees, well, that's a much bigger angle, so let's think about that. The first quadrant is 90. The second quadrant takes us to 180. We need to go more, don't we? We need to go 30 degrees more. So that tells me we're in the third quadrant. Right, because we started here. We went around that much is 180. So we need 30 more down here to give us the full 210, right? So we're gonna call that 30 degrees. Remember, none of this has to be perfect. It's just to give us an idea. The hypotenuse is 40. This is the right angle. Um, this is our R and this is our U. We can see we're in negative land here. So that will be good to know when we get down here. I know they're both gonna be negative, so you know what, I'm just gonna put the numbers, the negatives in right now. Um, how do we calculate these? Okay, this is the adjacent side, and I know that that is associated with the right axis. I'm sorry, I put the U in the wrong place, and the R in the wrong place. This is the R, and this is the U, sorry. Okay, so adjacent is associated with R, and that's associated with cosine. This up value, if you will, there's our point, that's associated with the up axis, and so I'm gonna use sine to find that. All right, so to find the right value, we will use cosine. 40 is the hypotenuse times the cosine of 30 degrees, and then to find the up value, 40 times the sine of 30 degrees. The angle and the hypotenuse are always the same. Remember that normally we would say cosine equals um, this, but what we're doing is we're cross multiplying ahead of time and we're bringing that right up there. Same for sine. That's the way we normally write it, but we're just bringing the hypotenuse right up as a coefficient to the trig function. There's the hypotenuse, there's the hypotenuse. It's just a way to shortcut our calculations and just do a little bit of the algebra in our heads. Okay, so calculator, 30 cosine times 40 gives us 34.8. We already determined that that was a negative right. And then to go down here, 30 sine times 40 gives us the up value. That comes out even, it's negative 20.0. Beautiful. We combine, this time we're doing subtraction each time, aren't we? And we get an answer of minus 
minus 13.2. What that tells us is that from the original place where he started, which is like, I'm gonna draw it on the next page. I'm gonna copy that over. I don't wanna squeeze it into that little space. Okay, so our ending answer was minus 16R minus 13.2U. And John wants to know how far, how, far, how far from the village he ended up. Well, let's draw the whole thing. And what we do is we assume that the village is at the origin. So he ended up a minus 16 to the right and minus 13.2 to the up. We can find that as a point of rectangular coordinates. And so we know that he went 16 miles this way. And then he went to the negative up, he went 13.2 miles this way. If we assume we're looking at a compass, he went west and then he went south, didn't he? Which is interesting because the first trip he took was this way, but then he took a big trip that way. So this is where he ends up after both of his trips. And those are the two trips. It's kind of hard to, to necessarily see it in our heads, but mathematically we know that this means this is where he ended up. Is he gonna just gas up and keep going? Does he have a surgery here? Will he be spending the night? Is this his home? I don't know, but Flying Arrow will end up here and I am happy for him. I hope it's the end of his day and he gets to lay his head down and then tomorrow he'll get up and fly some more. Um, this, is, this is the calculation John wanted for the answer, but he wanted us to interpret it in terms of the story. He wanted us to draw a picture that looks something like this. I don't think this is common. I think most of the time in the problems, John just wants us to end like that. But I want you to know that we can take this information and create a lovely sense of, of place, of where he was. And it reminds us of how important vectors are for navigation. I'm really happy. Flying Arrow is one of my favorite problems of the year, I have to tell you, and I'm really excited we got to do it. Okay, guess what? We're done. Goodbye.